Sister Josephine and Brother Roger Batchelder's baby was born yesterday. He is a doll. His name is Matthew Lee, eight pounds, 17 ounces. And so they will not be in the service for about two weeks because with a newborn, I like them to stay home with the baby for two weeks. That's uh, when they building up their immunity and especially with COVID and everything that's going on, um, I told them that I would rather they would stay with their baby for two weeks. So we're gonna be down them for about two weeks, but then we'll be able to see the baby. Um, and there's plenty of pictures online. He is adorable. Um, also, we have, um, looks like some people out sick, so we'll pray for them. Um, towards the end of the service. But uh, at this time, I'm going to turn the service over to the brother and sister Mitchell and Anna. <laughs> All right, so before we start song service, I have a really big praise report. I had gotten paid for my job and I paid all my bills, looked at my bank account and I had $5 left. No food, no formula, no diapers, and I panicked. And I will have to admit that instead of trusting in God and believing that he was gonna do everything 100%, I panicked. I went into panic mode, I said, okay, I've gotta change this, I gotta fix this only to go to work the next day to tell my boss that I might have to quit because I can't afford to work there. And they have now provided food for my kids and me for the past weeks. They have provided formula for the baby for about a month. They've given us diapers. And it looks like I'm also going to get a raise. And we're going to help pay for my electric bill. All right. Crazy. All the things that what I was going to say. What job does that? Never heard of it. Nobody. And, it's, and it, it's the big person at the hospital. He heard of it, and he said, no, we're going we're gonna to do this. And he got the other big weeks at the hospital together. HR. HR. I mean, it's like yeah. the, the top one at the hospital, not the nurse, but the... Yeah. And the Lord has given her uh, grace in their sight. They don't want to lose her. And they have just, they told her and there's more. There's more. We've got extra money for this and there's more. Nobody else needs it, so you're going to get it. Just wait. Don't I make mean, the decision. Just wait. That was all they would tell me. Just wait for the end of the week. Don't make a decision. I've never, I've never had a job that's done that.
time, I'd like to see Brother Hutchins could pray over the offering. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God, Lord, for this wonderful day, Lord. Jesus. I'm so thankful, Lord, for your mercies and your grace, Lord, for all the blessings you bestow upon us, oh God. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you bless, oh God, the monies that we give, Lord, and bless the hands, oh God, that want to give, that can't give, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and glory and honor. We pray to your holy name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
I was teaching my grandchildren about rebellion and the still small voice said to me, this is what you're doing. And I'm like, what? No, I'm not. And it's like, yes, yes, you are. So tonight I'm going to teach on rebellion. I had to look a lot of things up. I didn't understand rebellion very well. Well, now I do. So rebellion is an act of violent or open resistance to an established government or rule, or the act or process of resisting authority, control, or conven uh, convenient convention. Excuse me. Um, so, if we have somebody over us, whether job, whether a pastor, bishop, somebody that that has authority to say, "Hey, you don't do that," we need to listen to them, even if maybe you just don't agree. You need to listen anyway. So rebellion is another word for defiance. Um, a rebellious person likes to challenge authority and break the rules every now and then. A really rebellious group tries to overthrow the government. An employee who ignores a dress code is being rebellious. If they tell you don't wear a low cut and you do, you are in rebellion. If they tell you to wear shoes that have full, full, um, no, no, yeah, full toes, not open, and you still wear the open toes, you're in rebellion. You're you're in a spot where you can bring in this rebellious spirit and it affects 
how you are with God. It affects your prayer life. It affects how you are even with your own spouse or your friends. Wherever there is authority, someone is probably acting rebellious, even in the church. We can take on a rebellious spirit if we are not careful, and that is what I did. I took on a rebellious spirit, and I didn't even realize that I had done this. There was something I knew I did right. I knew I was right in doing my job. But I was told by the authority over me, this is not what I want you to do. And I couldn't understand how it was right to go in that route that she wanted me to go. So I got a rebellious heart. In 1 Samuel 15, 23 through 26, it states, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Right. Yeah. It is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So I was also being stubborn because I was thinking of my thoughts and what I felt was right instead of, well, this is what she's telling me I need to do, I need to do it. So because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. He is talking to Saul. King Saul chose to um, to save the king and the king's um, the cows and all of the other livestock that they had because it was all royal, as he would put it. But it's not what God said. God told him that he needed to kill everything. And all the people were like, no, 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 let's, let's keep this, we get money. But that's not what God said. So he had a rebellious heart. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. And thy words, because I fear the people and obey their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, but thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee for being king over Israel. God had placed King Saul as a king, and Saul rebelled against of the words that God told him to do. So God said, I placed you there. I'm going to take you away. Take you right out of it. Proverbs 29 and 1 states, He that often reproved or corrected uh, uh, hardened, hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed in that without re remedy. Correct me if I'm wrong. But my understanding of this is someone being corrected, they harden their heart, they harden their neck, and they don't listen to that correction. And because of it, they will be destroyed. In Daniel 5.20, it states, but when his heart was lifted up, and this is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. So when Nebuchadnezzar lifted up, excuse me, when Nebuchadnezzar lifted his heart up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and, and they took his glory from him. What? 
he lost his throne too. So that's not one king, but two kings losing their throne over rebellion, over pride. Because that's what rebellion is. Rebellion is pride. We can bring a spirit of rebellion upon ourselves when we disagree with the authority figure and act upon thought, those thoughts and those feelings. Whether we agree or not, we need to have a submissive spirit. We need to have a humble heart. When we feel we have been done wrong, we get a stiff neck. We don't want to listen or hear what needs to be said. We also can become oversensitive and react in a rebellious way. I'm sorry. We can be sensitive to things that people say, and especially things that we really need to hear. So we have to be really careful to not allow rebellion to come in. So how do we fight rebellion? The Bible tells us pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. This is Proverbs 16, 18 through 19. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. And then Proverbs 22, 4 says, By humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. So if we have a humble heart and we fear the Lord, we will have riches, honor, and life. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you. And sometimes riches and honor doesn't mean wealthy and money. You can be rich in other ways. Rich in yeah. friends. Rich in, you know, God gives us what we need. He doesn't always give us an excess. And I, I have a way of saying, you know, I pray for a car. I want a Lamborghini. God gives me a meal. <laughs> you know what I mean? He knows exactly what I need. And maybe the Lamborghini is such a gas hog, you wouldn't be able to afford to drive it anymore. So he gives you an economic beetle. <laughs> the Lord does everything for our good. And I don't know who you are. You don't like to be told that you're doing something wrong. It just rubs you the wrong way. So I learned a long time ago go home and pray about it and ask the Lord for the Lord's mind so I could come back and be humble. Because it's hard to be humble. Who here likes to be humble? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time we're going to turn it over to Brother Hutchins. That was very good. And I'm not going to preach a sermon. She already did. So come Brother Hutchins and Give us what the Lord gave. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, rebellion. Nasty. It's like a bad disease. Don't want to hang around anybody that is rebellious. Praise God. And what I'm going to speak on tonight is uh, there's a lot of people out there in the world and different denominations, if you will, that are rebellious uh, towards what I'm going to speak on tonight. God bless them. And I pray that God will open their hearts and minds to the understanding of His Word. That uh, in 1 Samuel 15, uh, verse 22-23, as uh, Sister Ronnie Ann read earlier, and Samuel said, has the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than, than the fat of rams. 
For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as the iniquity of adultery, because thou hast rejected, as the rebellion part, rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. And that's the way the Lord is today. He is the Word. He's the living Word. Amen. In John, you'll see the book of John, chapter 1. And most of us can recite it verbatim uh, in verse 1. That God is the Word. In verse 14, He became flesh and dwelt among us. That was God. God is the Word. And he became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. That makes Jesus God. Jesus is the word. And if you reject his word, you're rebellious towards him. And he will reject you in due time. He said it himself. You don't receive me. You reject me. Uh... I will reject you before the Father. He said it in his word. But tonight I want to speak to you for a little while. I'm going to try to get, cut it short. It's actually a long uh, lesson, if you will. And I borrowed 95% of it probably from uh, Brother Woodward out of Canada. I love his teachings. And uh, I prayed today and I felt like the Lord wanted me to... to to speak on this tonight. And I wish people that running around outside uh, were in here to hear it. Praise God. We've heard cliches and, and things of the past. You can call them cliches or, or just sayings. And uh, one of them is clean, cleanliness is next to godliness. Godliness, right? We've heard that. Nowhere can you find that in the Bible. Nowhere. It's nowhere in the Bible. But yet people quote that and think it is in the Bible. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And another one. God helps those that help themselves. That help themselves. Nowhere can you find that in the Bible. People think it's in the Bible. A lot of folks. A lot of folks out there believe that's the word of God. But nowhere in the Bible can you find it. But I want to talk to you tonight about something that is in the Bible. And you might uh, think it's kind of profound. Saved by water. Saved by water. My folks, my dear sisters and brothers, it's in the Bible. And we're going we're gonna to take a look at that. First, we're going to pray, Lord Jesus. I'm so thankful, O oh God, for your mighty words, Lord. For I know there's power in your words. There's deliverance in your words. There's salvation in your words, O oh God. And I ask, O oh Lord, if you'll open up our hearts and minds to the understanding of your word, O oh God. And everyone that's listening, O oh God, to the, under the sound of my voice, O oh Lord, touch them, O oh God. Give them a revelation, O oh Lord, of your word. In Jesus' name, give them a hunger and a thirst, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's go to 1 Peter 3, and verse 20 and 21. Right quick and in a hurry. This is Jesus. Which is sometimes, Jesus went and visited these people in prison. And which were sometimes were disobedient. Rebellious. Mm -hmm. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was being built. Or was a preparing. Wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure where unto even baptism do it also now save us. It's not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hold it right there. You see that? 
Years ago, when I was in a, in a, a different, if you will, church, uh, they taught this same thing about baptism. And I, and I tried to spread the word. I told the co-worker one time, if you're not baptized into Christ, you're not saved. Baptism is a part of salvation. And they got terribly ugly, mad at me, and hated me. And one of them was my boss on second shift. I mean, he was, he was furious. I won't tell you what denomination he was, he was but and he hated me after that. Matter of fact, he stopped going to the church he was going to and backslid. He started smoking cigarettes again and, and whatever else. And he used to go around preaching how God delivered him of his cigarettes and drugs and, and, and all this and that and the other. And, and uh, I got talking to him, wanted to share more truth with him. And he got so mad at me, God bless his heart, that he backslid. He hated me. But it's true. Salvation is part, uh, as you were, baptism is a part of our salvation. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says we are saved by water. We can't take 1 Peter 3 and 20 and just rip it out of the Bible and throw it in the trash can. If we do, we're rebellious. We don't want to be in rebellion with the Lord. We need to obey His words. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. It was like in the days of Noah. You see that water. That water destroyed all the sin. And all the evil. On planet earth. That was in the sight of God. He couldn't take it no more. He couldn't stand it. It was so wicked, so sinful. And he told, he found, uh, Noah found favor with God. I said, by grace, God worked with Noah. And he had, had him build an ark. And, he, and Noah built the ark according to the specifications God gave him. Now, what even if Noah decided to make it out of popple, the ark? Or make the ark out of hemlock or maple or birch. I would I would have thought cedar would have, would have been real good. Very light, strong, and it has a very high tolerance or resistance to water. A lot of people, uh, Mississippi and the back and whatever, made rafts out of cedar. Uh, very good, <coughs> floats very well. But no. Noah built it according to God's word. And guess what happened? When God brought forth his judgment on planet earth and totally flooded it to destroy all the sin and evil, Noah and his family, eight souls, were saved by water. They rose above all that sin and wickedness. In the like manner today, baptism doeth also now save us. We just read it. And it's not the putting away the filth of the flesh. It's a good conscience toward God. It's not just a, a show of, well, I've just joined the local church and I'm showing you that I believe in Jesus. I think I'll get baptized. No. It's through a good conscience. By a good conscience. Toward God. You really love God. You want to obey his word. We're going we're gonna to get into it here a little deeper in a minute. Praise God. It's part of our salvation. It's through a good conscience. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Matthew quickly. Matthew 24, 37 through 39. 
For those of you that just came in, we're talking about baptism. Saved by water. Baptism. It's a wonderful thing. Praise God. Matthew 24, 37. It says, But in the, in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. People are not going to know the day or the hour. It's going to catch them by surprise. Just like it did back in the days of Noah. Praise God. So we have to be really hungry and concerned and want to serve and obey the Lord. Praise God. And study his word. Let's look at Romans chapter 6 real quick. Talking about baptism. Being saved by water. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Christ, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Hold it right there. You see that? When you go down into that watery grave, you're buried with Jesus Christ in baptism, into death. In other words, your old man, your old woman, dies out in that watery grave when you go down into that water. You die out. The old man, the old woman is dead. No longer liveth. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. You see that? You're dead and then you rise up into a new life. That's being born again. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You see that? It's showing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's what you share in when you're being baptized. Praise God. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. You see that? That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over us. For in that he died. He died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, and he liveth unto God. Praise God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's such a wonderful thing. And in verse 4 and 5, you can see the death, burial, and the resurrection when we get baptized into Christ. Again, the old man dies, and you're raised up into newness of life. I said you're born again of that water in the name of Jesus when you're baptized in his name. Praise God. Let's go look at John chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. I know this is old news for seasoned saints, but there's some that need to hear it. Maybe there's some out there in uh, video land, if you will, that need to hear it. Praise God. I hope they don't turn me off. And I hope I don't turn them off. Yeah, I'm speaking the truth. John 3, 3 through 5. Here's Jesus talking to a man by the name of Nicodemus. He's a Pharisee. He's a high priest. Very religious man. But Jesus told him, yeah, very educated, a lot of money, 
he was a ruler of the Jews. And Jesus told him, Jesus said unto him, Truly, truly, or verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We're talking about salvation here. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So you see, it's a must, folks. It's a must. You must be born again of the water and the Spirit. Tonight we're talking about water. Saved by water. Praise God. You must be born of the water and of the Spirit. Praise God. And we're going to get into why. Let's look at Matthew 1 and 21. Matthew 1 and 21. An angel came and told Mary, Jesus' mom, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, that's what Jesus came to save us from. Somebody ever comes knocking on your door, are you saved? Half of them don't even know what uh, being saved from. Most of them think you're being saved from going to hell. Jesus came to save us from our sins, which puts us into hell. But he came to save us from our sins. Get ahead of myself a little bit, but it's sin that separates us from God, our relationship with God, our communion with God, our connection with God. Totally separates us. So we have to be saved from our sins. Praise God. He went to the cross at Calvary to pay the penalty for our sins and making a way for us to have a relationship with God through the gospel. Our sins are not remitted from us until we obey the gospel. Our sins are remitted in baptism in Jesus' name. There's no other way, folks. Praise God. There's no other way. Our sins are not remitted until we've been baptized in Jesus' name. I've had a lot of people in the past tell me baptism has nothing to do with salvation. There's one right down the road here wanted to argue with me. And I didn't want to get into arguing with him, so I stayed quiet. I could have told him, yeah, okay, so we want to rip out uh, Acts chapter 2 out of the Bible and throw it in the trash can, First Peter 3, 21 and that, just rip it out of the Bible and throw it away. I could have said all kinds of things, but I didn't. He wanted to argue and fight with me. But I didn't. I don't argue and fight. I just tell the people the truth, and that's it. Said that baptism has nothing to do with salvation. But I'm telling you it does. Do not listen to anyone that tells you that. Baptism is not essential to salvation. I don't care if it's some pastor or your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or uncle or aunt, co-worker or whoever it is. Because that's not what the Word of God says. No sin will enter into the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Praise God. When you're born of the water, your sins are remitted. Praise God. It's very simple. If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name to have your sins remitted, then you still have your sins. And you will die in your sins if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name to have them remitted. They've got to be remitted 
in baptism in the name of Jesus. Look, let's look at Act 238 right quick. We all know that and can probably uh, recite it verbatim. But then Peter said unto them, remember this is the very first sermon ever preached in the church. The early church. The church. When it first started in Jerusalem, praise God. In 33 AD, by the apostles, Jesus taught them what, what to preach. Then Peter said unto them, repent. There it is. First thing you need to do. This is the gospel, folks. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? The remission of sin. <coughs> Jesus came to save us from our sins. And that's how they're remitted. Yes, he forgives us when we pray, when we come to him. But they're not remitted until you have get baptized in his name. Praise God. He said, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's being born again of the water and of the Spirit. So you can enter into the kingdom of God. If you read that whole chapter, it's about being saved. Down verse 40, 41, it talks about those that did believe were baptized. And there was about 3,000 souls added to them that day. In, in Acts 2 and 47, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So he added them to the church when they obeyed. When they believed, they repented, they were baptized, they received the Holy Ghost. He added, that's how he added them to his church. We don't go before a board of demons, or deacons and get approved and come back next month and you know, a third Sunday of the month or whatever and when there's four or five other ones ready to be baptized and get baptized. No. It's, we do it immediately. Praise God. Let's look at Mark chapter 16 real quick. We've still got plenty of time here. Mark chapter 16. But I don't have too many more verses to go. Have you out of here in ten minutes. And he said unto them, Go ye into the world and preach what? Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, huh? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. You see that? So that goes out the window just believing. Some denominations say you just got to believe in Jesus. And you're, you're fine. You're, you're cool. You're on your way to heaven. No. Jesus said it with his own lips. Those that believe in is baptized shall be saved. Let's look at Galatians real quick. Galatians 3 and 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You see that? You have to be baptized. When you're baptized, you're baptized into Christ. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, then you're on the outside of Christ looking in. You're going to be baptized into Christ. And like the new uh, international version, the NIV, says that you clothe with Christ in baptism. You put Christ on. It's a covenant. You take his name upon yourself, upon you, when you're baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's look at Luke. This is interesting. Luke chapter 1, verse 73 through 77. I'll read it right quick and in a hurry. This is about John the Baptist coming and teaching and, and making the path straight for the Lord. The oath which he swore to our fathers Abraham. This is the oath. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. 
For thou shalt go before the face of, of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge, here it is, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. You see that? This is how you receive salvation. You have to have knowledge of salvation by the remission of sins. And that's what was preached, praise God. Let's look at Luke 5 and 24. This is Jesus. If you read the whole story there, he heals his paraplegic laying on his bed. The Pharisees get really upset with him because he says, uh, your, your sins are forgiven thee. Or, Take up your bed and walk. Most of us all know the story. He says, but, but that ye may know after he did what he did, he said, but that ye may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth to give, forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go in thine house. You see that? I want, to, I want you to see that to show you that Jesus has the power to forgive sin. The Pharisees in the background said, Oh, only God has power to forgive sins. Well, I mentioned earlier in John chapter 1, verse 1, the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us in, in verse 14. That was Jesus. That was God in the flesh. And He has power to forgive sins, folks. Praise God. Matthew 28. 18 and 19, real quick. We're almost done. To show his power. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. You see that? Now, all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. No one else has any power. He has the power to forgive sins. That's why you have to be baptized in Jesus' name. Because all the power is in His name. He has all the power. Praise God. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And if we had time, I'd show you who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is. You can read Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And see it for yourself. Unto us a child is given. A son is being born. And what his name would be. Praise God. He has the power to forgive sin. Titus 3 and 5 real quick. Titus writes, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You see that? Praise God. He washes our sins away in baptism. It's so important, folks. It's part of salvation. And finally, let's look at Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. There's a man by the name of Ananias baptizing Saul, which became Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He said to uh, Saul or Apostle Paul, he says, And now why tarries? Why wait? Arise and be baptized. And wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Praise God. I've got one more verse the Lord gave me. I didn't give it to Bob. I don't have it written down. But it's 2 Thessalonians. 
Look over here in all the T's. If you have your Bibles, all the T's. Thessalonians, Titus, Timothy's. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. I'm going to read it real quick. Seeing it, it is a righteous thing with God. It's a right thing in God's sight, in God's eyes. It's a righteous thing with God to recompense. That's to pay back tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, come and rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, that don't know God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They rebel against the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't want to, they don't want to hear it. They want to say a prayer and think they're saved and be fine, believe on Jesus, and they think they're, they're, they're golden. Praise God. Some have it right, some baptized, but they don't have the name. That's where I came from. A different church, if you will. They truly believe you had to be baptized. To have your sins remitted. If you didn't, you still had your sins. But they didn't do it in the name of Jesus. And it has to be done according to the scripture. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Book of Colossians chapter 3 says, Everything you say or do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything. And baptism is one of the things that we have to do. Praise God. Let's all stand. There's more to this lesson. Everyone throughout the book of Acts was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Lord, or the name of Jesus. Praise God. Every one of them. Samaritans, Gentiles, Jews, all baptized in Jesus' name. And if you're out there listening, and you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, it behoove you. I challenge you to try it. Praise God. I'll never forget the time 21 years ago when I came to a Bible study. Bishop taught that night, Wednesday night, just like tonight, Acts 2.38. I says, does this mean i got to get rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ? She said, that's what the Bible says. And I had to get baptized that night. It was just eating at me, pulling me, drawing me, so strong. Well, Brother Walson walked up to me and says, Harry, can we do anything for you? Is there anything we can do for you? I said, yes. I want to get baptized. He says, well, come back Sunday, and we'll teach you a little bit more about baptism, and we'll get you baptized. I said, no, you don't understand. I need to get baptized right now. He says, okay. 11 o'clock at night, they took me over to a swimming pool. He baptized me in Jesus' name. When I came up out of that water, I kid you not, and I had been baptized uh, several other times different denominations out there different ways but when I come up out of that water this time after being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ it was like someone took this trench coat off me that was soaking wet and just threw it to the side I felt so light I felt so clean mm -hmm. and immediately the next day God started speaking to me to my spirit, to my heart, not audibly. And I started to see God's hand work in my life. It was amazing. What a difference. So I encourage anyone under the sound of my voice to get baptized 
in Jesus name there were some disciples in Acts chapter 19 Apostle Paul rebaptized them in the name of Jesus they had been baptized by John the Baptist who baptized Jesus but he, he rebaptized them he said they got, had to be rebaptized in the name of Jesus and so they did and they received the Holy Ghost praise God so there's nothing wrong with being rebaptized. Praise God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. That was a good Bible study. I enjoyed that. Jesus. So we have a prayer request. Brother Jeff, um, his sister is in the hospital. And he would like us to pray for her. If everybody could stand, we're going to pray for Kathy Kerr. And ask the Lord just to come down and touch her and bring her out of the hospital and give her the strength to go on and show her, Lord, the way of salvation. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask, Lord, that you come down and touch Kathy right now. Come down into that hospital room and just let her feel your presence. Let her know you're real, Jesus, and give her a hunger for you. Lift her up, Jesus. Save her soul. In your name, Lord, I ask that you just move, Lord. Move for her. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you have your way, Jesus. We worship you, Lord, and we praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Does anybody else have a prayer request? Yes. Thank you, mighty God. Can you even show up? Your dad, what? One prayer Okay, well, we'll pray for your dad. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask that you touch Eugene. Lord, in your name, draw him with your spirit, Jesus. Just give him a hunger for you. In your name, Lord, heal his body, Jesus. Lord, just save his soul. In your name, we worship you and we praise you, Jesus. Pray for Uncle Larry. Uncle Larry, yes. My mom's brother had heart surgery. Maybe I shouldn't have said that on mine. Is, is uh, Brother Jeff, is the camera off? No. Uh,